This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. It is your Monday. Hope you enjoyed that weekend. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Michelle Chamberlain in for Rebecca Smith. It's Monday, May 23rd. And the day off to a very nice start. Our time this morning is 630. And ahead on WKYT, how the community is embracing a Lexington family that was involved in a deadly crash in Texas over the weekend. How a group of fallen Kentucky police officers is being honored today in the bluegrass. Also this morning, a country music legend is bringing her huge act to Kentucky. We'll have details on Dolly's big show coming to Danville. Boy, we have a really good start to the work week. We've had to finish off like our weekend. Our weekend was pretty nice. The finish part. And yeah, the start of the work week is fantastic. 40s, 50s early this morning. It's a little bit cool. By the afternoon, 77 degrees, an awesome day in store. We get much warmer than that, though, in the forecast. I'm going to show you those numbers in just about 10 minutes. And let's get to the news here on WKYT. It's a story that many of you have been talking about. It's one that we're constantly updating for you this morning. Four members of a Lexington family were killed in a terrible crash in Texas. Yeah, it is just terrible. Three other family members survived that crash. WKYT's Mark Barber is at our live desk this morning with reaction from the family's pastor. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Michelle. The Avalar family was a part of Clays Mills Baptist Church in Lexington for 15 years. When their friends at the church learned that the father and his three sons were killed in this terrible crash, they prayed for the family that they had prayed with for so many years. These four people are in heaven today. Avalar's pastor says they lived lives that mattered because they lived out their faith. Their close friends leaned on each other for support during Sunday's emotional service. Matthew Avalar, the youngest person killed in the crash, was just six years old. His brothers Kevin and Daniel were 14 and 17, and his father Israel was 46. They were all in Texas visiting family when they were killed. They were on Highway 315 near Tyler when they were reportedly rear-ended by another car and pushed in front of a semi-truck. They were young people of great respect and character. All of the children were. We're certainly praying for uh, the mother, the, uh, the grandmother, and uh, the one daughter that, that are still alive. Three survivors are all in the hospital this morning. We're told that the grandmother is doing well and that the 11-year-old daughter is stable. However, the mother is still in critical condition this morning. From the live desk, Mark Barber, WKYT. Thank you so much, Mark. Happening today, a man who police say admitted to killing the mother of his children is set to face a judge. Lexington police charged William Pomeroy with murder and tampering with physical evidence. They found the body of his girlfriend, 43-year-old Amy Kogel, Friday morning in the backyard of the couple's home on Pinckney Drive. She had been shot multiple times. Pomeroy was arrested on Friday night after he turned himself into police. His hearing is scheduled for 1 o'clock this afternoon. Visitation is tomorrow for a young mother who was killed in a Jessamine County crash. 20-year-old Coriana Blackford was from Harrodsburg. She died Saturday when she crashed into a tree on U.S. 68 near Wilmore. Family members say Blackford leaves behind a two-year-old and a six-month-old. I hate that the boys aren't going to get to grow up with, with her and see what kind of person she was. Because she lived for them. She worked for them. That's what she was doing that day that she got killed. She was on her way to work. A fund to help the family has been set up at United Bank in Nicholasville. The Jessamine County coroner says 41-year-old Shane Carson died in a motorcycle crash. Deputies say he was heading north on Old Danville Road near the Garrett County line when he crashed into several trees. A Hardin County father accused of abusing his newborn baby will face a judge today. Court records show Justin Owens' one-month-old son arrived at the hospital with a fractured skull and a brain injury. Police say Owens first told them he tripped while carrying the child, but later admitted to losing his temper. Today, four Kentucky officers who died in the line of duty this past year will be added to the Kentucky Law Enforcement Memorial. An important service and ceremony going on today in Richmond. WKYT's Mike Byer is live on the EKU campus with details on today's ceremony. Mike? 
Good morning, Bill. I'm standing in front of the Kentucky Law Enforcement Memorial on EKU's campus, which currently lists the names of 525 officers killed in the line of duty. This morning, nine more names of officers killed will be added to this memorial, bringing the total up to 534. Now, of the nine officers being added, four were killed in the line of duty last year alone. Those names to be added are Richmond Police Officer Daniel Ellis, Nicholasville Police Officer Burke Rhodes, and Kentucky State Troopers Joseph Ponder and Eric Christman. Additionally, the Ceremony will recognize five Kentucky officers killed in the line of duty between 1893 and 2013, but whose names were not added to the National Memorial until recently. Those names to be added this morning are Georgetown Police Officer George James, Harrodsburg Police Officer John Russell, Hazard Police Officers Rory Drawn and Alfred Holland, and Kentucky State Trooper Blake Trivy. The memorial is Kentucky's only statewide monument dedicated to fallen law enforcement officers. Now, Governor Matt Bevin will deliver the keynote address this morning when the ceremony starts at 11. One thing's for sure, it should be filled with a lot of emotion. Live in Richmond, Mike Byer, WKYT. All right, Mike, thank you very much. And we'll have coverage, of course, later today on WKYT and WKYT.com. Well, after days of rain, and it really got a lot better yesterday, things are finally starting to dry up around here. Finally, right? Here's <laughs> meteorologist Micah Harris to help you plan your day, Micah. You know, it's been a while since we've actually had back to back days of dry days. And, and when I say a while, you have to date back toward April. I mean, late April, you're talking the 24th and 25th of April. That's a long time ago to have back-to-back -back dry days. We've been very wet. This may obviously at a surplus, and you can see outside we're going to be dry again today. 48 to start off with, so that's a bit of a cool, uh, cool start to the day. Already very nice there by noontime. 70 degrees. If you're heading out to eat, to grab some lunch with some friends, family, you want to sit on the patio. That's perfect for that. Teachers want to take the kids out to 77 by the afternoon as we look for an awesome, awesome day in store. Now, that actually gets much warmer. This is actually not even close to our warmest temperature in the forecast. Could we jump that by 10, maybe 12, 13 degrees? Maybe push toward that 90 degree rating? I'm going to show you that in my seven day in just about five minutes. Thank you so much, Micah. New on WKYT this morning, Lexington police are looking for the driver involved in an overnight hit and run. It happened around 3 o'clock this morning on South Broadway at High Street. No one was seriously hurt when one car rear-ended another. Police are looking for a newer model Chevy pickup with some front-end damage. Investigators in Montgomery County are looking for a thief. Mount Sterling police say this man was involved in a theft at Walmart. They say he left in a white Jeep Grand Cherokee with a UK license plate. The family of a fallen Jessamine County paramedic is back in the bluegrass after a very special trip to Washington, D.C. John Mackey was one of 32 EMS workers honored in our nation's capital over the weekend. Nicholasville police say back in November, the ambulance that Mackey was in was clipped by a car. And when he got out to check on the damage, he was hit by another car. Organizers added Mackey's name to a gold leaf and put it on the National EMS Memorial Tree of Life. A group of pastors is reopening the doors of a Christian homeless shelter in London. The shelter originally opened in 2007 but closed in the fall of 2015. The pastors recently bought the building at an auction and they want to get back to helping the homeless in their area. The group is meeting tonight at 6:30 at the River of Life Fellowship in London. They're inviting the public to attend. Well, a spot has basically sat empty for years right at the edge of downtown Lexington, but there is a new plan for a highly visible lot downtown. The Herald Leader reporting a five story mixed use complex will be built at the corner of Maine and Midland. Old National Bank, based in Evansville, will be the main tenant. Other retailers are expected to be announced soon. Developer Phil Hulebeck told the paper that he is also planning to build about four dozen apartments above the bank. Construction is set to begin in the fall. It is expected to be complete next year. There have been lots of talk about that lot through the years. One time it was proposed to be a pharmacy and some other things, but now it sounds like there is a plan for there. And maybe you want to make plans for this. A country music legend will be hitting the road on tour, and she will be making a stop in the bluegrass. I know. You're happy about this, right? <laughs> Dolly Parton is coming to Danville. She will perform at Center College's Norton Center for the Arts on August 9th. Dolly's Pure and Simple Tour will feature her most popular hits as well as some few new ones. This is Parton's largest North American tour in over two decades. Tickets aren't cheap, though. They start at $175. You can buy tickets on 
the Norton Center's website beginning on June 6th. All right. Maybe she'll do, uh, why'd you come in here looking like that, right? Why'd you come in here looking like that? <laughs> there you go. How about that? you got to finish it for me. I don't know the rest. <laughs> He's like, no, thank you. No, let's move along. <laughs> let's move along. Let's check to see how traffic is moving along this morning. And here's Officer Don with a check out live drive traffic. Good morning, Don. Good morning. Well, we're collision free right now, and we checked the interstate. 75 looks great both directions. So does 64, and even inbound Nicholasville Road. Let's get a look outside. We'll show you drive times on your way in so far this morning and traffic flow. No major delays to deal with. As you can see around the city, the circle looks good, and so does Man of War. From Nicholasville, 13 minutes. Georgetown, 17. From Paris, it'll take about 17 minutes. And it uh, looks like from Winchester, we're dealing with 26. Now back to you in the studio. Up, Don, thank you so much. Appreciate it. And you can get the latest traffic and weather information anytime with the WKYT Weather Plus Traffic app. Download that for free in the app or Google Play stores. We're also uh, pushing out uh, traffic info always on Twitter, so join us there as well. More news coming up on WKYT on your Monday morning. A great start to the day. Hope you'll stay with us. Bueller, Bueller, why fans were shouting his name in Chicago. That's coming up after weather. And a lot of sunshine to be had today and really the next couple of days. Now, it's about the temperatures. They get really warm as we travel off into your next several days. I'm going to show you that in those 80s in your forecast. Coming up next. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. It's a pretty good start to the day, and it looks great outside. Now, I will tell you this it's a little bit on the cool side. We're still in the upper 40s, lower 50s. But trust me on this, it's going to rise very rapidly. Beautiful start there in the capital city. Look at Lexington, a great vantage point looking due east. Jackson still with some of that lower lying fog there in the valley regions. It's about 90% of the year is like that over in the, uh, in the valley areas. London Corbin coming in right around 48 degrees in Laurel County. If you're wanting to get the kids outside, it's perfect for today. Kids are at home with you. You can take them out and about. It's going to be a great afternoon and sort of great morning, too, once the sun really gets going. Teachers, you want to get the kids outdoor today and tomorrow because rain does arrive. As we slide toward midweek and late week, a lot of sunshine to be had next couple of days. So I don't see any chance of rain today nor tomorrow. But heading off into Wednesday, here's 8 a.m. Wednesday morning. Watch what happens when we get into the afternoon. <clears throat> Excuse me. That will actually bring us a chance at some rain. It's not a great chance. It's not widespread rain, but a chance at some rain as the front gets a little bit closer to us. Then we hit Thursday, Thursday morning starting off with a couple of showers, a couple of rumbles of thunder here and there. By the afternoon, though, <clears throat> we're going to be seeing warm te uh, temperatures and also drying out temperatures. So none of these days are widespread rain. Look at those temperatures, mid-80s. So we're talking about really warm conditions. This is not a record. Low 90s are actually a record in the next few days. Uh, but still, that's well above average. It's about 10 degrees above average. So we will take that. But check this out. Did you know this? This is kind of your fun fact for the day. The last time we had back-to-back -back dry days, Two consecutive days in a row uh, that we've seen, it was back in April. I mean, you got to date back almost a month. April 24th and 25th it was the last time we saw back to back dry days. It's a long time ago. It's been a very wet May, that is for sure. Surplus of rain across the region. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you see that on your seven day. It looks like it'll be a mess, another wet pattern. But I want you to look at the percentages, okay? Look at the percentages every day because that's what we're really looking forward to is, is only a 30, 40 percent chance of rain. These are not great chances, but they are there. And uh, it looks like most of us will stay mainly dry as we work our way through the work week, but still can't rule out a passing shower or thunderstorm. So if you have any plans, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, keep to them. Um, just know this, that it's going to be really warm. This is lake weather. It's coming yeah. up. And, and, and pool weather. I don't know if the pools are open yet, but yeah, it's getting there. I mean, this is really warm yeah. outside. Very nice. And Good it, to it, see. It is. Maybe it's take a few days for that lake to warm up, That's, though. So, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, lake's still cool. You <laughs> yeah. can get out on the pond soon. It'll be oh, good for you that. Oh, you got it. A lot of folks will, uh, will dive right in. Thank you, Mike. It's 647 right now. So it's hard to believe it's been 30 years since Ferris Bueller took his now infamous day off. Over the weekend, fans celebrated that. Iconic Chicago film with Ferris Fest. As one of the highlights, hundreds recreated that famous parade scene in Daly Plaza. Just like it because it's so mischievous and like he could do what I never did in school because I'm such a nerd. They all adore him. They think he's a righteous dude. 
<laughs> the parade was just one of the many weekend Ferris Fest events. The iconic Chicago film was released on June 11th, 1986. Hard to believe that has been 30 years, but here we are, and we're still having a good time. Go watch that movie again. Yeah, I haven't just seen it in years. Refresh, <laughs> refresh your memory there. Hey, it's good to have you along. 6:47, rolling toward the seven o'clock hour, and CBS this morning coming up shortly. Yeah, we'll have more news when we come back. Coming up, we report from Hanoi as the U.S. lifts its embargo on arms sales to Vietnam. Plus, Donald Trump's finances under scrutiny. How the candidate has responded in the past to questions about his assets. More real news coming up on CBS This Morning next. CBS This Morning is coming up very shortly with the very latest from around the world. Of course, your eye opener, and that'll be about nine minutes away at 7 o'clock, 6.51 now, here on WKYT. A fifth suspect in a Lexington teenager's murder will be arraigned today. Jordan, Jordan Jackson, sorry. Jordan Jackson faces charges in connection with the October death of 18-year-old DeMichael Bolton. State police say he was shot outside an Anderson County business during a Kentucky State University homecoming after party. Kendall and Kenneth Berry, William Edwards, and Antoine James are also charged with Bolton's murder. State police say they are still looking for a sixth suspect. In Madison County, a man's murder trial is set to begin today. Ryan Denholm is charged in the 2011 shooting death of Zach Flower in Berea. Denholm's brother Matthew is already facing a life sentence for his role in Flower's death and for the murders of a Richmond couple. Visitation is tomorrow for a young mother who was killed in a Jesmond County crash. 20-year-old Corianna Blackford was from Harrodsburg. She died Saturday when she crashed into a tree on US 68 near Wilmore. Family members say Blackford lives behind a two-year-old, leaves behind rather, a two-year-old and a six-month-old. And topping international headlines this morning is the ongoing search for more wreckage from Egypt Air Flight 804. The search resumes this morning in the Mediterranean Sea. Yesterday, Egyptian officials sent a submarine to help recover the flight's data and voice recorders, which could help determine what led to the plane plunging into the sea, killing all 66 people on board. No cause has been ruled out for the crash, including terrorism. President Obama removed a half-century-old ban on selling arms in Vietnam. Obama, who is on a three-day visit to the country, says both sides have established a level of trust and cooperation. Obama steered clear of harsh condemnation of what critics see as Vietnam's abysmal treatment of dissidents. The 2016 race for the White House continues to heat up. Frontrunners Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump traded jabs yesterday amid new polls showing the contenders in a statistical tie in a hypothetical general election matchup. Now, Clinton's rival Bernie Sanders widened his rift with the Democratic establishment, blasting so called superdelegates for supporting Clinton even before she had a competitor. And don't let a case of the Mondays get you down. Look out for the little things that could brighten your day, like a lucky penny. Today, May 23rd, is National Lucky Penny Day. And you know the saying, find a penny, pick it up for the rest of the day, you'll have good luck. A fact about pennies, the first were made out of copper back in 1793. Now, we don't know who started celebrating pennies on this day, but if you're in need of some good luck today, keep your eyes peeled for those pennies. Right, Bill? Oh, that's right. Be uh, on the lookout there and, uh, and watch for those lucky ones. Our time is coming up on 654. Follow WKYT.com all day long for the latest wherever you are. A Lexington man accused of killing his girlfriend, who was the mother of his children, will be appearing in court today on murder charges. We'll be there. We'll bring you the latest updates. We'll let you know also what we find out as we check on the survivors of that awful accident in Texas that killed four members of a Lexington family. We've spoken to the pastor of the family's church. They a special service yesterday, and we have that interview available on our website. Trending this morning, a five-story building will be going up in downtown Lexington, and an Evansville-based bank will be the main tenant. The Herald Leader reports that Old National Bank will lease 7,000 square feet on that new building's first floor at Main and Vine, right at the edge of downtown. Angry birds flocked to success over the weekend at the box office. The movie about flightless birds soared to $39 million in its 
Independence Debut Weekend, knocking Captain America's Civil War off its first place perch. On Kentucky.com, it looks like Nyquist and Exaggerator will be resuming their rivalry at the Belmont. Nyquist took the Kentucky Derby, and Saturday was Exaggerator's Day at the Preakness, so there will be a lot of talk about the tiebreaker potential in the Triple Crown races. And 65 cadets began their training today to become Kentucky State Police Troopers. They'll be undergoing 23 weeks of intense training. CBS This Morning, coming up shortly with your eye opener. And, of course, we'll have local updates from WKYT News. Join us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter or Instagram. And for the latest, WKYT.com. A lot of sunshine out there early this morning. And as we travel off into your afternoon, that is not going to change whatsoever. Really good-looking start to the day. I will tell you this. The places over in Far East... Eastern Kentucky, you get toward the West Virginia border. That's where we actually had a couple of rumbles of thunder yesterday and a few passing showers. Where you saw rain, if you saw rain yesterday, far, far Eastern Kentucky, Floyd County, Pike County, Martin, those areas, you could have some fog early this morning. Other than that, all of us waking up to sunny skies. Temperatures there in the 40s and 50s. A really, really good start to the day, look wise. Remember, it's still on the cool side as you step out the door early this morning. By the afternoon, though, add about 30 degrees to that. A lot of sunshine, winds coming in from the south. That'll help us out big time. 77 degrees, but guys, look at your seven day forecast. If you miss the seven day turn and look at the screen, we're talking 80s every single day after this. And not just 82, 83 degrees. Look at, look at back toward Thursday and Friday, 87 degrees. Now, I will tell you this a couple of models are spitting out 89 to 90. I'm not jumping on that bandwagon just yet. Uh, but we'll see how it turns out. And definitely no washout anytime soon. You will get a couple of rumbles of thunder mid and late week, but it's about the temperatures. Really warm. And your coolest high temp 77 for the I week. I like that. We'll take that. It's right. going to be a nice climb. That's Nobody's right. more up to date than you to start your day. Thank you so much for being with us on WKYT. WKYT.com with all the latest all day. CBS this morning is next. Have a good one.